We've been looking at the evidence available on elderly people who start dialysis and we found that there were big gaps. So when we're faced with trying to advise families on uh, what to do when, uh, when they're faced with a decision to start or not to start dialysis or other forms of renal replacement therapy, there's very little evidence to tell them what to expect. We also know from the literature that, that uh, dialysis patients feel that they haven't been given any information and that they haven't been given a choice uh, about whether to start and that there's a high level of regret for having started dialysis. So this is what we wanted to change. We wanted to try to get more, get more pieces for the puzzle, try to figure out what is the context in which people have to make this decision and what are the outcomes of the patients who decide to go with renal replacement therapy. So dialysis, broadly speaking, is replacing the function of the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Renal replacement therapy is the umbrella term for that. And hemodialysis usually is used for the outpatient setting where you go in and you have hemodialysis three times a week. The renal replacement therapy can be that, but it can also be in the intensive care unit where you're on a continuous machine that replaces the function of your kidneys. Usually the patients that need that are sicker, so they are not able to tolerate the stress of, of intermittent dialysis. They need that continuous, softer version of hemodialysis. It is all dialysis, though. It's all dialysis. So the main findings were, were this. Uh, the first, that the patients started in the, so many patients started in the hospital that they were unprepared for dialysis and they had to make that decision not knowing that they would ever have to do that. So many of the people that ended up having kidney failure had no idea that their kidneys were not working properly and then they got really sick and they had multi-system organ failure and kidney failure was just one of the things that they had to struggle with. The other surprise was how uh, many people die and how fast they died. We uh, saw that 40% of the of our total pop, uh, of our total group was was gone at six months. So uh, people die fast, a and we saw three distinct groups. So we had the group that started as an outpatient um, in a controlled setting, and they did fairly well, even if they were quite old. Even the oldest people did quite well in that setting. However, the patient that started in the intensive care unit did very, very poorly, with only 27% uh, being alive at six months. And then there was the intermediate group who were hospitalized for some reason, either for advanced kidney failure or heart failure or some other chronic uh, life-limiting illness, and they sort of fell in between those two groups in terms of survival. The other surprise uh, finding was how few people were actually able to return to home. So the majority of our patients went, came from home to the hospital. But of those patients, less than half were able to return home. Most of them either died or went to nursing home. We know that people at this age don't do very well in the intensive care unit. Um, however, uh, numbers are not easy to come by. and uh, more. Mortality numbers, especially for this age group, are not widely available. We also know that um, there's a tendency to, to treat irrespective of the patient's prognosis, and both the doctors and the families tend to uh, want to beat the odds. But you have to also be able to make that decision based on data that support you um, in that decision, because patients' values differ some people value life extension over any, everything else. But what we're finding is that many, especially elderly people, worry more about their functional status, their independence, their, and their ability to enjoy life, especially if they've had a life well lived. Many elderly patients have strong feelings about not wanting to be um, dependent on others, for instance, and not being able to maintain their independence. So if that's uh, the uh, values and goals of the patient, then we'd probably do well in advising them to, uh, to opt for more uh, comfort care or palliative care options. Uh, these are difficult decisions to make, um, and even if we have the data and even if we had more detailed data, 
um, people will still struggle with this decision because it's a life and death decision. So it will never be easy. What we're hoping is to dig even further into this information and uh, see if we can predict for the individual patient who's going to do well and who is not. In the meantime, at least we can inform patients and families that their chances of making it um, back home if they uh, get sick enough to be in the intensive care unit needing kidney uh, replacement or renal replacement therapy, that they are unlikely to make it out of the hospital and back home, and that they're very likely to die within the short term.